According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a simple definition of destruction is the state or fact of being destroyed. It goes on to say that it could also refer to a destroying agent. What happens when the destroying agent of something very precious in your life is related to you? How do you piece back together the destruction caused in a relationship? Do family ties make forgiveness easier to offer? After our laborious process of making a simple family decision, we gathered at Carolyn's house for a barbecue after Maya's ballet recital. The family was all together and, well, let's just say that things did not go exactly as planned. You tell me, is this sort of thing normal when your family gets together for a casual backyard picnic? Just an update for everybody, Micah was admitted to the hospital. Um, they will probably have to do surgery. Hopefully there's no nerve damage, but we'll hopefully know more by the end of the day about, you know, what's to come next. But, um, you know, this is pretty serious. So Emily and Eric and I have basically moved into Caroline's house so that she and Tony can be at the hospital with Micah as much as possible. And we'll be here as long as they need us to be here. And we really need to pull together on this one though. I need everybody's help. Um, this all happened kind of suddenly. Not sure kind of what Mike is going to need, what Carolyn and Tony are going to need, but for right now we're just kind of here and I'll try to hold down the fort, but I really need everybody to pitch in. Thanks. Kathy's not here to do the video for me, so we're just going to have to do the audio. Amy, I I'm happy to run any errands for you and, and help you in any way I can, except I, I can't... I can't babysit Carolyn's kids the way you are doing. I'm still too fragile for that. And as much as I want to have children and be a mother, the whole idea of caring for that many kids at once is daunting to me. How is this for a plan? I think you already have my assistant's email too. Elizabeth, thank you so much for your help. I really do appreciate it. I know that, you know, helping with the kids is outside of your comfort zone, but running errands would really be a big help right now. Thank you so much for doing that. And um, it just, it really helps. Oops. Okay. Seeing something questionable over there. Gotta go. Bye. Hi, everyone. I'm just back from the hospital. I need to get a quick shower, change of clothes, and I'm heading right back out there and to see them for what it's worth. Um, Caroline is still at the hospital with Micah. They only let one parent spend the night, so I just need to get a couple of other things and head back to the hospital. John and Eric, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart that for boarding up the window and taking care of everything in the room, I'm sure it was a whole lot of fun and and really it was a good it was it was good and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, we'll worry about replacing the glass later. Also, John, thank you for sharing Amy and Eric and Emily and your family for the week. Um, they've been a huge help and comfort to us while we've been going through this, and we're still optimistic that Michael will be home soon. Um, then you can have your family back, I think, if we haven't been pampered so much by then that we don't want to give them back. Um, we're still waiting to hear... Oh, Amy will be staying! Yay! We'll see. Um, we're still waiting to see on surgery. Um, the surgeon isn't there for the weekend, so we don't know what they're going to say yet. Can't forget Moosey. Um... And unfortunately, I work tomorrow, which means that it'll only be Caroline there at the hospital. Because, you know, two brains is better than one when you're dealing with this. Micah's in a lot of pain, so we're just hoping that everything goes well. Um, who am I forgetting? Anyhow, I'm going to spend a lot of time with the kids now. I just spend some really good time before I have to go over there. Thanks again for everyone. You're a great family. Thanks. Amy, Elizabeth will be leaving the office shortly. I got that list of items that you needed, but I made some revisions. Clearly, it wasn't correct. But don't worry, I fixed it for you. If you need anything else, uh, call or text me, not Elizabeth. I will determine if it's uh, something she should be bothered with. Hey everyone, Micah 
I just went down the hall for some x-rays. So I just wanted to take a few moments to update you guys on what's going on. Um, thank you again for all of your help. Tony and I can only hold it together right now because I know you're all behind us and you've got our backs. Um, just a quick update on Micah's arm. I met with the surgeon this morning and I guess I guess I liked him. I don't really know. Everything's just happening way too fast. Um, and I have to make these quick decisions so it doesn't even matter if I like him or not. I just need to know that he's a good surgeon and he's going to do a good job because Micah is going to need surgery. And um, it looks like he might even have surgery today. But everybody's schedule so tight with the surgery and getting the staff and everybody they need in the operating room that um, we're just kind of in a holding pattern right now. Um, even though he needs it, they're just they're not ready for him, apparently. Um, I'm trying to be understanding, but it's really hard for mom when you see your baby in so much pain. Um, the worst part is that Micah doesn't even know this yet, but um, talking to the surgeon, it's going to require a lot of physical therapy after the surgery, and um, probably even next season he's not going to be able to play baseball either. Um, going to be pretty hard for him to take. Um, the good news is Maya did not get hurt, but um, she's pretty shaken up and she will not sleep in her bedroom at night um, or even naps. She's afraid that a monster is going to come zooming through her window and um, I just hope that she gets over it soon so that everybody can get some good sleep and rest and just put all this behind us. Um, Right now, the window is covered with plywood. Thank you, John and Eric, for making that happen. Um, but she's still not going to sleep in there right now. Um, I'm worried about our schooling because now we're getting behind in school and I'm here at the hospital and who knows how long Micah's recovery is going to take. And so really, in the end, this accident's going to impact everybody in the family. I just need to get through this right now. I know um, real soon, probably in the next few days, that anger is gonna really start welling up inside for Solstice and Doug. But right now, I just need to focus on my son and getting everything back together. Um, I just can't worry about that right now. Um, I need to stay focused. And um, here's a few things that I need. I wrote down a list of things that I need to get taken care of. Um, John, can you and Eric and Brad go check the window because it's supposed to start raining soon. I need to make sure that it doesn't start raining in our house. Um, I don't know if we can pick the repair company or if that can be arranged. Does Doug, um, does Doug do that since Doug is the one who has to pay for it, right? Right? Yes. Brad, can you please talk to Doug about how and when he plans to pay for it because not if, it's when he's going to be paying for the repairs. Um, and as much as I hate to do this, Amy, um, I think I'm going to have to cancel the barbecue next weekend because I don't think Micah's going to like having the party at the house after his game that he can't even play and that could just be a little too close for comfort. To, um, and also, Elizabeth, can you help her call everybody to make sure everybody knows that, that party is canceled? I really need your help on that. Um, Tony and I are trying to come up with a plan to distract Micah next weekend so that he's not thinking of too much about it. Um, maybe he'll be too exhausted from the surgery and everything to really care, but that's it. Well, then I should go check on Micah. You guys, see you later. Thanks. Bye. Don't worry. I'm on top of the list and there's nothing any of you need to do. Brad... Brad, please, can you please talk to Doug and find out whether or not he plans on paying for the window or what the pro what's going on? I don't know how this works. I mean, it's Carolyn and Tony's house. They should get to pick the contractor. But if Doug has to pay for it, does he get input? I mean, Bradley, can you please look into all of that and, you know, who is responsible for what and who gets, you know, a say in what? Um... You know, I need you guys' input, though, about the barbecue. Should we really cancel the barbecue? I mean, I feel like 
it's too late to cancel it because the other families are depending on Carolyn to host it and for them to find another location and disappoint the kids. I just don't know what to do. It seems mean to do for Micah. I don't know how to throw it together at the last minute. I don't know any of these women. It seems wrong to cancel it. What should I do? I mean, help. I don't know what to do. So it's nice to have a family that all pulls together and helps out in a time of crisis. Thanks, everyone. I saw parts of video messages. I didn't have time to watch them all. Did something happen to Micah? I can't talk to Solstice about it. She's all worked up about the dogs. The vet says that the dogs will be just fine. But, but, but Solstice is still in panic. Amy, it'd be really nice if you or Carolyn or Elizabeth talked to her about it. I don't know what to do. They didn't tell me marriage would be this hard. We need to figure out a way to get these videos marked as private because Carolyn sure does not need to see those last couple of videos. So um, John took care of getting the window fixed and that's done. It's not paid for, but at least the window is fixed and it's done. So that part is good. Hello, I'm Mitch and I used to be learning all about chickens and farm animals and I'm practically a chicken expert. But since Micah broke his arm, I've been learning about broken bones. What Micah has is a single fracture, which is when the bone is broken in one place. The doctors are concerned that fragments may have gone in his nerves or muscles, which is why he had to have surgery. Now that I know about broken bones, maybe if a chicken gets a broken bone, I'll know how to help it. brilliant children thank you so much for the video that you sent that really cheered my heart and it's just good to see you guys working a way that even though I'm not there you're not falling behind on your studies um, Micah's surgery just to update you guys is going to be this afternoon and it looks like it's going to go really well I trust the surgeon um, he's going to have stitches for a while, but after the stitches come out, they're going to be able to cast it up and go home, and then once the cast comes off, that's when we're going to start with the physical therapy. Um, I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, that this isn't going to, we're not going to be in the hospital forever, like I was afraid he was going to be, um, but God is good. So, um, got to run, Micah is going to be waking up soon. I love you guys. Bye. Thank you everyone for your concern about the dogs. They had to have some stitches, but the vet said that they'll heal up pretty nicely. I don't know what made her jump through that window. I, th I think Micah was playing with a baseball, and she may have, he may have seen it as a reflection in the window, but I don't think it's a good idea for Micah to be playing with a baseball at parties with crowded, you know, crowded people and so close to the dogs. It just doesn't make sense. He's only had cuts on the bottom of his paws, which makes walking around very difficult for him. He's very sad about that. So I've been sitting with the dogs all day and night to make sure that they don't lick their wounds. You know, after their trauma at the, their, at the doggy obedience school and all that humiliation that went on, and now they have to wear this cone of shame, I'm just really worried about them. And, I just, you know, once their physical bodies heal, I think I'm going to end up having to get them a therapist. But thank you so much, everyone, for your thoughts and prayers. And if you want to come visit, please, please give me a call first, because I just want to make sure that they're up for it. Thank you. Amy, I'm going to do my best to try not to let Caroline see the post from Solstice. Caroline and I even haven't even talked yet about why the dogs were there. Um, Solstice said she wasn't going to bring them, and she brought them anyhow. I, Caroline hasn't had the energy yet to be angry with her, but she will. She's going to get. She's going to get to that point. Caroline doesn't know yet that Doug didn't pay for the windows. We have not asked Micah yet what happened, but one of the other mothers saw it all. Um, it wasn't like it was Micah's fault. The bottom line is, why did Solstice and Doug bring
bring the dog. Normally, I don't like to get into whose fault is it, but this one's pretty cut and dry. And Brad, in a situation like this, just who's responsible for paying for the damages? It's not worth filing a homeowner's claim about it, but someone has to pay for it. I just assumed that Doug would pay. His dogs broke the window, but Doug did not pay, and now he's not returning our calls. So Brad, if you could find out who's responsible for this and what our options are if Doug refuses to pay, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Um, Tony, as much as I don't think secrets are good between husbands and wives, it might be a good idea just to keep this from Carolyn for a little while. I'm not sure she can do anything about it anyway, so I'll wait and tell her later. Bradley, who is responsible? I mean, somebody's got to pay for this window. It's fixed, but it's not paid for. So, somebody's coming to the door. Gotta go. Bradley, check on that, please. The window repairman I sent to Caroline's house said he couldn't find a broken window. Amy, I need you to coordinate with the repair company so we can get that checked off your list. Amy, I received a list from you again. Again, you didn't include the things that you really need, so I fixed it. Elizabeth will be by tonight with things that you actually need. I'm working on a therapist for Maya, but I haven't found one yet that will come out to the house and meet with her. But don't worry, I will find one. And I'm assuming that the hospital will provide one for Micah. I'm going to talk to Elizabeth tonight when she comes over about Kathy because this is just getting ridiculous. Y'all should have seen the stuff she sent and didn't send anything on the list that I gave her. She sent rubber rain boots. I have no idea what she thinks I needed rubber rain boots for, but it was kind of funny, but not at all helpful right now. Okay, I'll talk to you when I hear from Carolyn from the hospital. Tony, for once I agree with Amy. The family should do the right thing here. It's possible that Doug doesn't even know, or that Solstice intercepted the invoice and Doug doesn't even know anything about it. Let me try to talk to Doug first and see what he knows about what's going, really going on with, you know, with the severity of Micah's injuries and, uh, and the financial end of things. And we'll go from there. And Tony, you know we have your back. If the medical expenses are a problem, just let me know. Brad, thanks. I appreciate the offer. Families are such a blessing. And from what I tell, it probably would be good if Kathy just took a step back. Um, let's talk to Doug to just find out how much he knows. If you could do that, Brad. I hope we can avoid any more problems with the situation. Let's hope he's just in the dark and just doesn't really know what's going on or know the whole story. As far as everyone at the hospital, everyone's doing good. Um, we're visiting, everyone's visited the hospital on a regular basis except um, Doug and Solstice. Mike has really enjoyed seeing everyone. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt though and figure that they just maybe don't know what's going on. Okay, quick update from Carolyn in the hospital. Um, surgery went well, everything went good. So far we don't think there's any nerve damage, but they're still watching that closely. They Hopefully Michael will be coming home from the hospital tomorrow. Um, yes. Elizabeth, can you please pick up some welcome home decorations? I was thinking it might be kind of nice if we could decorate the house as, you know, like welcome home so when Micah gets here it's all festive and fun for him. And Elizabeth, check over my list because, you know, if Kathy brings the decorations, chances are we're going to end up with 4th of July decorations. So make sure she doesn't get into that. Um, did everyone see? I just have to know. Bradley agreed with me yet again. I'm buying a lottery ticket, people. Talk to you soon. Amy, I'm, I'm happy to pick up anything you need. I don't know why Kathy was changing your list, but I'm confused about why the list has so much food. Elizabeth, the Bible study ladies and the baseball moms have been very, very helpful. But, you know, basically my family of four has moved in and Carolyn's family of six, so that's a lot of people to feed. And I just don't feel that it's right to ask them in their generosity to feed my family as well as Carolyn's family. So, and you know, plus with two teenage boys in there, it's like six people right there. So we're really feeding a tribe. <laughs> it's a lot of food. So the help that they've given is wonderful, but you know, we still do eat a lot more than that. Amy, I, I don't think that is right. Haven't these nice Christian ladies heard the story about the loaves and the fishes? 
Can't they stretch their generosity to feed your family too? Let me just have Kathy call the private chef I used to use. Bradley and I are happy to send food for all of you. Let those good Christian ladies bless someone else with their stinginess. Chickens, I am a city girl. Carolyn's the country girl. You know, I'm like working as hard as I can here, but chickens are just a little bit outside of my realm. Luckily, Mitch can handle the chickens and I don't have to do much with that. But Elizabeth, you know, as far as the help from the church ladies, I mean, I think that you have to keep in perspective that it's a lot of food. Feeding an additional family of five is a stretch for a lot of other people. Not only feeding them and the cost of the food, but the time and the money involved in driving it out to Carolyn's house. So to ask them to feed another four, I mean, I just, you know, sometimes you just have to take the generosity that people can give and say thank you and know that they're giving everything that they're able to give. So no one person can provide everything that, you know, we're going to need through this. That's why it takes a whole family pulled together. Um, you know, like, and you're a good example, Elizabeth. I mean, there's a whole lot more you could be doing to help me, except that I'm trying to be sensitive about your desire to not spend a lot of time with the kids. I get it, that's not your comfort zone. So I'm not asking you to spend the night out here and take care of the kids so that I can go home and have a night at home. I mean, you have to remember, I had to put my business on hold with no notice and take care of the kids and, and do everything in my life in addition to Carolyn's life. I could use a whole lot more help, but I get it that you're giving everything that you're able to give. And so I appreciate that. And I'm not going to ask you to give more. I'm just going to be grateful for what you are giving and grateful that Mitch is taking care of the chickens and that I don't have to. So the one thing, Elizabeth, that you really could do that would be very, very helpful is talk to Kathy. And try to keep Kathy just out of our family business because she's really kind of misunderstanding a lot of things, creating a lot of additional work. And um, I know she means to be helpful, at least I think she means to be helpful, but the fact is, is she's not being helpful. So Elizabeth, please, can you talk to Kathy and just keep her confined to your work life? Thank you, Amy. Thank you for understanding that I'm, I'm doing what I can. And for understanding that some things I cannot do just yet. And yes, that does help me to understand the Bible study ladies better. Thank you for explaining it to me. You have opened my eyes to something I had never thought about before. And as for Kathy, she's done such a good job of holding my world together and I don't wanna discourage her from doing her job. I will be needing her in the months ahead. So, Bradley, um, Elizabeth is coming over to the house tonight with some welcome home decorations to decorate the house for Micah. I'm going to try to wing it so that she stays for a while and helps the kids decorate. And I'm really kind of hopeful that spending a little bit of time with the kids and seeing how much fun they are and, and you know, how much joy they can bring will be a good thing for Elizabeth. So if she comes home late, sorry about that. And hopefully, you know, she'll come home in a good mood. I'm wondering what they're doing with that chicken out there. Gotta go. Amy, Elizabeth asked me to check with you, but I've got everything under control. I don't think there's anything else to discuss right now. Just let me do my job. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for pulling together and just keeping my family running while I'm gone. Um, Tony told me about the decorations that you put around the house for Micah's homecoming tomorrow. Thank you. Micah is just going to love that when he comes home. Um, Elizabeth, it just really melts my heart how you've come to the side of my family. Um, the children have really loved being with you and having you there for them. Thank you. Uh, I know that had to have been hard. That has to be hard for you. Um, Micah comes home tomorrow. Yay! And um, the barbecue is still happening. The baseball barbecue, you guys. Thank you for pulling this off. Um, thank you for Amy and all the baseball moms for rallying behind us, getting the food together. And uh, it's going to make Micah's day, just being able to be around his friends. It's really going to cheer him up. And it, it wasn't going to be fair to cancel the whole thing for the, whole, for the rest of the team. So 
I'm, I'm really glad that we're going to get to do this. I'm going to be exhausted and might not be able to enjoy it, but it's going to mean so much to Micah and everybody else. So, um, Solstice and Doug, you are not invited. It's just not worth the risk. You cannot come to this. Um, you can't be there. So, um, I'm sorry, but i got to put my foot down. Um, thank you guys. Bye. Hi, just a quick date update everybody. Um, Micah is doing very well and he's coming home from the hospital in just a couple hours. Yay! So everything's well except everybody needs a whole lot of sleep and I don't think that anybody's going to get that um, for quite some time. But anyway, hope everybody can come over and say hello to Micah soon. Thanks. Amy, I, I still feel a bit raw, but I really did enjoy spending time with Caroline's kids and putting up the decorations with them. It was not as painful as I thought it would be. I, I want to help with the baseball party. I contacted the caterer, the table rental company, the decorations, the photographer, and the cleanup crew. What else do we need? And, and can you please tell me what an estimate of how many people there will be there? The caterers want to know, and how many boys are on the baseball league? I want to make the gift bags for all of them, whether they win or lose. And if you won't let me send my personal chef to you and John, at, at least let me bless Micah with this party, please. Amy, I emailed you a list of questions that I need answered by the end of the day so I can complete the plans for the baseball banquet. Please be sure to answer these questions thoroughly and promptly so it doesn't delay the planning process. Elizabeth, that's really sweet of you. And I mean, I can't tell you how much that would mean to the kids, but let's just be a little bit careful about not going over the top because if you raise the bar too high then all of the other baseball moms are going to be like they have to you know do the same so remember this is a backyard barbecue it's not the Taj Mahal or anything um and you know if you could kind of ask Kathy to back off a little bit and keep things in perspective about what the party's supposed to be like for the baseball boys because it you know, sometimes it's starting to sound like she's ready to raise Babe Ruth from the dead for this thing, and it's a little over the top. So um, I appreciate your help. I really do, and it's really great of you to do everything you're doing. Let's just, you know, keep it at the level of that the baseball boys are used to. Thanks. Amy, can you please just let Elizabeth do what she wants with the barbecue? She has such new joy, and I haven't seen her like this in years. Just let her do it. Don't worry about the expenses. We'll pay for it all. Brad, I hear you, and I really do understand. And I think it's great that Elizabeth wants to be so involved. But, you know, again, let's not upset the balance of the jungle here. And it is just one party. And, you know, they kind of have a way of doing things in the baseball team that, you know, we don't necessarily want to upset all of that stuff. So if you could figure out a way how to tone Elizabeth down a little bit, I'll try to identify the alpha female in the baseball team and see if I can't talk to her about, you know, what's going on and how we can make this good for everybody. But Bradley, I'm telling you, 10 years from now, when you have some little boys, you're going to understand this better and appreciate what I'm saying to you, okay? So, and also, Bradley, remember, it would be really great if you could talk to Elizabeth, get Kathy out of our family business. Um, everybody would appreciate that very much, right? Right. <laughs> And, um, you know, really, let's tone things down for the barbecue because heaven only knows what would happen if we let Kathy and Elizabeth take over the baseball barbecue.